It was April and I had been working night shifts at a care home for individuals with learning difficulties in a facility just outside of Ipswich. Most of the residents at the facility slept soundly until at least dawn, so usually it wasn't hard work. I would sit a colleague who had recently emigrated from Nigeria to start a PhD exploring corruption in the Congo. That night, which was a Wednesday, one of the residents, Rachel, was very unsettled. We spoke a lot and I knew her better than any other resident. After being told that she would be transferred to another facility later that week, she had started crying and banging her head against the wall. She told me, all my friends are here and I don't want to leave them. I will be scared and lonely. I told her it would be difficult at first, but she would make new friends and that she needed to be there to get the best treatment. Rachel was now 15 and had been an orphan most of her life. She had suffered massive head trauma after being given illegal drugs by a foster parent and falling down a flight of stairs. This had led to brain damage. After a long chat, she said she was feeling much better. She gave a huge yawn and said that she wanted to sleep. The next day, however, she was unsettled again. The nurse had administered a sedative, but she continued to punch and kick her bedroom walls until she was bleeding and had to be restrained. I knew that sometimes music had a calming effect on her, so I took her to the sensory room and we listened to the Beatles, which was her favourite band. A while later, she said she wanted to take a shower, so I gave her the key to the bathroom and went to the staff cafeteria to eat a bagel. At that time, Victor was looking after Rachel. When I returned to the ward, Victor was knocking on the bathroom door, but there was no answer. The head nurse followed me in and without saying anything, he approached the door and in a loud voice said, I'm coming in, Rachel. As soon as he was inside, he called for help. Rachel was slumped over the, bath the side of the bathtub with a length of cord wrapped tightly around her neck. She had tried to kill herself. Her face was nearly blue and her eyes were bloodshot. Victor ran for the ligature knife and cut the cord. She began gasping for breath as soon as the cord was cut. It was a close call, but she would survive.